These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So let's say that we have a reaction in which compound X is oxidized and compound Y is reduced. So a reaction in which compound X is oxidized and compound Y is reduced, well then, what, what happened to X if it got oxidized? What does it mean that it got oxidized? Um, addition of loss electrons? Yeah, loss or gain of electrons. Which one? Loss. Yeah, that's right. So as you said, loss of electrons. So X lost electrons <clears throat> in the reaction. So Y gained electrons. In fact, if X lost the electrons, who took them? Well, Y. And if Y gained the electrons, who did it take it from? X. That's why these are called redox reactions, because any reaction that involves oxidation also involves reduction, because whoever's losing the electrons must give it to somebody who gains the electrons. So these have to go together as a pair. It looks like you might have been remembering uh, a memory aid that people use a lot, oil rig, um, for remembering uh, these. There's another mnemonic which I think is a little bit better. Yeah, Leo the lion goes grr. Loss of electrons is oxidation, and gain of electrons is reduction. And this is always true for any reaction or any type of electrochemical cell. This is always true. Loss of electrons is always oxidation, and gain of electrons is always reduction. The reason I don't like this as much is this says oxidation is loss, but it doesn't say loss of what. And it says reduction is gain, but it doesn't say gain of what. And the, the problem with that is because there's other definitions of oxidation or reduction. For example, being oxidized also means gaining bonds to oxygen. So you're losing one thing and gaining another. And that, that's one way that people get confused. When something is getting oxidized, it's generally gaining bonds to oxygen or other electronegative elements. So being oxidized means losing electrons by gaining bonds to electronegative elements. That's why I don't care for this mnemonic as well, because it doesn't say what, what you're losing in this case. This is a little bit better because it focuses on loss of electrons is oxidation, and gain of electrons is reduction. All right, and if you keep this mnemonic in mind, it's not too hard to remember the difference between these two. I was just mentioning that there's another definition for oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is when you're gaining bonds to oxygen and other electronegative elements. You can see why that's the same thing, because if you're gaining bonds to electronegative elements, they would take the electrons away from you. Um, and it also tends to mean a loss of hydrogens. Generally, if you're gaining bonds to electronegative elements, you're often losing hydrogens. You don't need to worry. I just wanted to mention that for completeness, though. You don't need to worry about that too much, because those definitions are more useful in organic chemistry and biology. In general chemistry, these are really the definitions that we're going to tend to focus on. But it's worth mentioning that there's other definitions that are pretty much equivalent to this. But we'll, we, for general chemistry, we should mainly focus on the electrons. But for completeness, oxidation also means gaining bonds to electronegative elements and losing bonds to hydrogen. And reduction means losing bonds to electronegative elements and gaining bonds to hydrogen. But for, uh, th those are more useful for organic chemistry and biology perspectives, so we can focus on this perspective. Now, if you're being oxidized, does that make your oxidation number go up or down? That's right. Just as a memory aid, it, this kind of just makes sense just as a memory aid. If you're being oxidized, it kind of makes sense that your oxidation number should go up. But why is this? Well, the key thing to remember is oxidation number is just a way of measuring charge. Your oxidation number is just a way of measuring your charge. Well, if you're losing electrons, that means you're becoming more positively charged. Losing electrons means more positively charged which is an increase in your oxidation number, moving to the right on the number line. So we should be able to figure this out from this if we know that oxidation is a measure of charge. So what's happening to the oxidation number for Y that got reduced? 
the oxidation number decreased. And as a memory aid, you can just say, well, reduced sounds like going down. Well, the oxidation number here got reduced. I don't know if that's the real reason why these are called reduced, but that's a good memory aid. But this also makes sense logically. If you gained electrons, that means you became less positively charged. So your charge would decrease. So in redox reactions, generally one element has an increase in oxidation number and the other element has a decrease in the oxidation number. All right, and finally, um, if X is oxidized, does that make it the oxidizing agent or the reducing agent? Pardon? Reducing. The reducing agent. That's right. X here. Why is that? It's kind of confusing. Yeah, oftentimes people get confused about that. Actually, once we understand it, it shouldn't be too confusing to us, however. Um, so another name for the reducing agent is the reducer. That might be a more a logical way to think about it. It's the reducer. And another way to think about the oxidizing agent is the oxidizer. The oxidizing agent is the oxidizer. And the reducing agent is the reducer. So let's finish off the table, first of all. Uh, is this an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Okay. Yeah, this is the... All right, so in this case, X was oxidized. Well, does that mean it's the oxidizer? Well, no. If X is oxidized, that doesn't mean it's the oxidizer. X is oxidized here, that means it lost the electrons. Well, whoever took the electrons is the oxidizer. If oxidation means losing electrons, then the oxidizer is the thing that took the electrons. That's something that seems straightforward, but it's worth saying. Another way saying of saying that this lost the electrons is that somebody took the electrons from it. And the thing that took the electrons is the, is the um, am I getting confused here? Oh yeah, and the thing that took the electrons is the oxidizing agent. So in this case, Y lost its electrons. In this case, X lost its electrons to Y. So Y is the oxidizer that made X oxidized. Y is the oxidizer that made X oxidized. And by the same token, Y here was reduced by gaining electrons. Another name for gaining electrons is taking electrons. And maybe another name for losing electrons is giving electrons. Since X was oxidized here, it was really giving its electrons to Y. So a reducing agent is somebody who gives its electrons. And the thing that got reduced is the thing that gets the electrons. OK, so it shouldn't be too surprising that these words are different, because being oxidized is not the same as being the oxidizer. In fact, it's the opposite of being the oxidizer. And now, <clears throat> an analogy I like is um, suppose that I got mugged. Well, does that make me the mugger? Well, no. Um, the person that got mugged is the opposite from the person who was the mugger. So just because the words sound similar doesn't mean they apply to the same person. Well, in this case, X got mugged. It lost its electrons. Somebody took the electrons from X, but that doesn't make it the mugger. That makes Y the mugger. So X got mugged, so Y is the mugger. X got oxidized, so Y is the oxidizing agent. Okay. On the other hand, you wouldn't want to have to work that out all logically every single time, so it's also worth just memorizing that the, um, the, the thing that's got oxidized has the opposite word when we, uh, when we term it as an agent. Okay. Does that make any sense? Okay. All right, this is an important table for you to try to come up with again on your own. You should take a blank piece of paper and make sure you can write all of this down to make sure that you understand these concepts. Notice that this is a table of synonyms. Everything in this column is a synonym for everything else in this column. For example, if you're told that X is a reducing agent, then you know that its oxidation number went up, that it lost electrons, and that it was oxidized. Or if you're told that Y gained electrons, you know that it was reduced, and that its oxidation number went down, and that it is an oxidizing agent. So all these things kind of go together. This would be a good way to make, say, a multiple choice type of question, where they tell you one thing and ask which of the other things do we know is true or false about the compound. By the way, do you know what types of tests does your instructor give? Does he give like short answer or multiple choice? Or I think it's half-half. Okay, okay. Well, it would be hard to make multiple choice questions about uh, these ideas. 